All right, what's up? Welcome back to Structure Free Learning. Ah. In this video, we're gonna do a example problem for shear design. We're given concrete compressor strength of four KSI, grade 60 steel, and uh, go ahead and it says use number three stirrups. And then we have a, a simply supported beam. We want to, and in our schematic, it says to consider the movement of live loads so that we induce maximum shear. And this is the beam that we have. And really the first step here, just maybe before we even get into this, our approach in general, one is determine VU. And then let me throw this in. It, we'll start with the, the table, okay? So we'll determine VU diagram. And then two, we will set up a table for analysis. We'll set up the table and then go row by row. In the, and within that table, within this table, there's several things that we have to do. One, we have to answer, do we need stirrup? What is the VS that we need? We're gonna calculate basing of stirrup if I need them. And that's gonna be based on a theoretical, which is essentially applying phi VN greater than or equal to VU, or or it's going to be on code requirements and we will there's going to be three choices there's two code requirements essentially but there's going to be three choices and we're going to choose a smaller of those in that region so the determining the shear diagram number one here we're given a dead load of two kip per foot a live load of four kip per foot here's what my my beam looks like this and i'm going to draw two of them i'm just going to put them side by side and in both cases the dead load is everywhere Okay, because dead loads cannot move. With the dead and live, we're just we're going to use our combination is going to be 1.2 WD plus 1.6 WL, and so this will be this will be 1.2 WD. Our live load, we can have a couple cases. So one would be I would have the live load everywhere. So live load everywhere, and then in this case, I could have if I consider the movement of live loads. I will, in fact, have a larger shear in the center. So right now, the cent what's the shear in the center right now? Zero. Is zero. But I could have a larger shear in the center if I apply the live load on only half the beam, like this. Just by calculation, WU is 1.2 times the dead load, which is 2, plus 1.6 times 4, which is 8.8 .8 kip per foot. And then I have 18 feet. It's symmetrical, so I know that my reaction here is 79.2 kips. And I know that my support reaction here is 79.2 and then I can do the same here. It, you can agree, like here, for this half of the beam, for this half of the beam, WU is 8.8 .8 kip per foot. And for this half of the beam, my WU, or my load, my applied distributed load is just 1.2 times 2. It's going to be 2.4 kip per foot. And so now I can just go ahead and, and do my support reactions. There's going to be a resultant here of 8.8 .8 times nine is 79.2 kit and that has an arm of 4.5 feet and this one right here this will have a resultant of 2.4 times 9 which is 21.6 kit and this arm right here is also 4.5 i'm gonna apply my basic statics i'm gonna take moments about a equal to zero so I got BY is 36 kips upward. And then if I sum of the forces in the vertical equal to zero, 64.8 kips. All right, good. So now we can go ahead, we have all the support reactions. Within this drawing the shear diagram, we have, this is like a nice little statics problem. And then now we're ready to draw the shear diagrams. And look. So now, now you agree, if I put it on the left, I can also put it on the right. So technically speaking, if, if I if I want to be completely accurate here, there is another load placement that would look, the numbers are exactly the same as this beam that we just did right here. This is 18 feet, except the live load is on the right instead of the left. Support reactions here, this would be 64.8 kit and this would be 36 kit. And my shear diagram, my shear diagram would look like this, point four. It's almost like a mirrored reflection, right? Kind of a weird reflection of this. I would go from here, I, it would look like this, where this is 14.4, and then down here would be the, the negative 64.8. And if I took all three of the diagrams, 
and here let me let me color coordinate it. I'll say this one is is green and then we'll call this one orange. But if I take them and I overlay them on top of this diagram, I combine it and I combine everything into one. Like there's a green one. And then if I do the same thing with the yellow one or the orange one, now I go for every point along the length of the beam. I'll use a red line. And if I go to every point along the length of the beam, I'm just gonna highlight the worst. So here, this number, this right now is controlling. Then the orange controls. We'll say even the, because of the way the slope is right here, it would even control in terms of the negative number. It would be the green. And essentially the red line represents an envelope. In fact, it, there would be an above, if, if, we, if we were associated with directions right here, it would be an envelope of the shear. So this is the worst positive, if you will, shear at every point. This is the worst negative shear. For this, this number right here is negative 14.4. This number is positive 14.4. What I'm, I'm saying is that our shear diagram for half the beam is this. All right, that's great, okay? I know that this top value is 79.2 and this next top value in the middle is 14.4, and this encompasses all the live load movement. I'm gonna zoom in here, okay? And I'm gonna say, well, this line that I create, if I connect the dots from 79.2 to 14.4, that will give me one line that encompasses all the shears that can happen. And this is the line I'm gonna use as my VU line. It's my envelope. So this is what we call a shear envelope. So now we find this took a lot longer than normal, right? Mm -hmm. But because of that live load movement, we have this one shear diagram. I'll redraw it. I'm, I'm only gonna draw half of the, the shear diagram. So my shear diagram for half the beam. Now this length right here is nine feet. And so now I I'm gonna set up my table as an overview. I have a position along the length of the beam. So here, I'll even draw a beam under here. I'll draw half the beam. And I'm gonna define my position along the length of the beam, going left to right. So here is zero, and then I'm going X. And so my first column for my table is gonna be X. The next thing that's gonna be important is VU. The next question that's gonna be important after VU is, is do I need stirrups? I'll write stirrup with a question mark. So instead of stirrups, you say stirrups, okay? And then that question is, is VU greater than one half phi? VC. So this is the question that we have to answer here. Is it a yes or no? If it's a yes, then I'm going to need stirrup and that will involve determining VS, which is how much steel contribution do I need to satisfy the BDR? And so VS, the contribution I'm going to expect based on the VU, VS should be VU over phi minus VC like this. And then I will have, this table is going to get, I will have a theoretical spacing based on the VS, S theoretical, which is equal to A, V, F, Y, D over the VS, the shear strength contribution that I need. And then I'll have various code requirements. The minimum area of shear reinforcement, which is ACI sub 9.6.3.3, .3, based on the cracking angle and making sure we have a stirrup going through each one. What's the other one? 9.7.6.2.2. That's the four. That, yes, so we have to compare VS. Is this less than or equal to four square root FC prime BWD? right there. The spacing that we choose for design, S design, will be less than or equal to the minimum of these three values. So we could even create another column, call it S design if we wanted to, right? Like how are we gonna choose it, right? What are we gonna specify at this region? So we have this table, a visual, it's almost like a flow chart, right? Left to right. And what we want, let's say that we consider um, 
that the support is not a pin it's an air it's a bearing area here so we have a compression zone here so our critical section is going to be a distance d from the support and so if i look here at my shear diagram d is 27 inches okay so we had in this problem there was a cross section that was given so i have a d of 27 inches b of 12 inches and the total height of 30 inches i have at a distance d which is about two feet this will be my critical section so here i'll call this d and in this case d is 27 inches so my first location is going to be 27 inches mm -hmm. and i want vu is going to be at that location right there so within the shear design table calculations my first thing to do is determine vu at x whatever X is. In this case, X is 27 inches. I'm gonna use a shear diagram. In this case, my shear diagram is linear. So I can just determine it based on, based on similar triangles. Uh, if this D is 27 inches, I know that the remaining length here is nine feet minus 27 inches. So 108 minus 27, 81 inches here. And so in this triangle, the rise is just comparing slopes or rise over run. So here I would have 79.2 minus 14.4 divided by 108 inches is equal to whatever that orange value is. I'll call that VU minus the 14.4 kit over the 81 inches. I'm just, again, it's just a slope ratio calculation. So VU at that point is 63, exactly? Yeah. Oh, well, 63 kips. And so here, this number we found just from geometry is 63 kips. And so here, 63 kips. Next, I'm gonna check is VU greater than one half VVC. And so that is gonna require me calculating VC. We have normal weight concrete, square root of 4,000, 12 inches times 27 inches, 40,983 pounds. So remember, anything with the square root of 4,000, that, that's going to give us PSI. And so VC, if I do a unit conversion, is 40.98 kit. So now I'm going to compare VU is 63 kit. Is this greater than one half times phi, which is 0.75 for shear, the strength reduction factor for shear? times 40.98 kips, 15.36 kips, and this is a yes, yes, or true, therefore need. So now I, I'm gonna calculate the VS. How much contribution do I need from the steel? Is the steel contribution to shear? And I'm, that's based on the BDR. And so VS, the VU at this location divided by phi minus VC, and this, so VS, because I need stirrups, now I calculate what is the VS contribution that I need. Uh, 63 kip divided by 0.75 minus VC, which was 40.98 kip. So I need my steel to give me at least 43.02 kips. So I go back to my table over here. And now I can calculate using that VS, a theoretical steel spacing. We want VS to be greater than or equal to 43.02 kips. VS, based on the steel stirrup, is AVFYD divided by S, greater than or equal to 43.02 kips. And now S, if I go ahead and I solve this out, S, theoretical, Whatever I choose should be less than or equal to AV. AV is a number three bar, so there's two, and then the, it's gonna intersect at two points, the plane of the crack. So this will be two times 0.11 inches squared times 60 KSI. That's the yield strength of the steel stirrup. This is FYT in the code. D is 27 inches divided by the 43.02 kips and S theoretical is 8.28 inches. Now I do the code checks. Here, code check. In order to satisfy the minimum amount of shear reinforcement, but this is the minimum of mm, some set of equations that are built in. And this is going to give me of this, if I plug and chug some numbers, 
and this will be the minimum of and so based on that well shoot for aci 9.6.3.3 it's 22 inches and then now i'm looking at 9.7.6.2 is what i don't know uh, i should i just saw it 9.7.6.2.2 that for this one this has to do with the crack angle and so i want to compare first i want to know is vs less than or equal to four square root fc prime bwd and this is 81,082 kips. 82 kips. And VS was 43.02. So this is true. Yes. So our code for S of 9.7.6.2.2 is going to be the minimum of D over 2 or 24 inches. And in this case, uh, D is 27 inches, so our minimum is going to be 13.5 inches. 13.5 inches, and so within that 27 inch region, I'm going to use a spacing of less than 8.28 inches. So it's maybe eight inches. maybe 8 inches or 8 and a quarter, I don't know, whatever is easy to measure in that region. And I could use it for the entire length of the beam. And technically, your beam would be safe, right? Because it, it satisfies the worst case, mm -hmm. okay? But I wonder, is there a point in this beam where I don't need stirrups? And if I look, you know, my, my feeling is, let's see, what was one half VVC? It was 15.36 kips. 15.36 kips is somewhere right here. So from 15.36 kips to the middle, I don't need stirrups. And if we're trying to save some money, we have a lot of beams here, then, then maybe we consider other locations, right? And so the question is, how many more times should I have to do this? Well, I think like, cause we're doing this by hand, like maybe two foot increments is good. If I was doing it in a spreadsheet, do like six inch increments, right? Yeah. You know, because it's just, now it's just, just repeated calculations. So here I could create a new row. I don't know how many rows you want me to do. I, I, I got it. You got it. Yeah. Yes. I love it. I love it. Yes. <laughs> so here I would say 27 inches is close enough to two feet. So the next one I would do is like four feet. And I should see this, this theoretical spacing increase uh, dramatically because of that one over VS relationship. And so now can you fill in the blank? And that's it. Stretch of